Welcome to this episode of Jing TV. Are you horrified by herniated discs or scared of sciatica? Stay tuned. <laughs> episode of Jing TV. I'm Megan. I'm Rachel. And we are here to talk about being horrified by herniated disc or scared of sciatica. So the big question out there is what can you do for those conditions, particularly herniated disc? Yeah. Um, and we want to talk about this because we find that a lot of therapists are really scared, mm. aren't they, between herniated disc? And they either think that they can't do it, they're going to hurt the client more. Yeah, make it worse. That's a big concern. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, obviously, it's useful to know actually what herniated disc is. Yeah. It's a very long word. Um, and we had a good laugh, didn't we, on the online course? We did. When, we were, donut. when we were talking about this. Because um, we got a real live donut, which we don't have here today, to demonstrate the pathology of what happens with a herniated disc. So, the big thing is that people talk about a slip disc. Um, and in fact, the disc doesn't move at all, does no, it? No, it doesn't. So a disc is like a donut, and the jam or the jelly in the middle is the nucleus pulposus. And what will happen by either repetitive sort of strain, which mm. is kind of more rare, or an injury, the pulposus will actually um, come outside, will sort of leak, and that might be because the outer disc is perforated yeah. or something's happened. It and just when wears down. It wears it, down, it right? So when that comes out, it can harden a bit and put pressure on the nerve, yeah. which is effectively what the pain is and from. That's the thing that causes the pain. So um, the disc is in the middle and it tends to leak out to one side mm. because of the posterior longitudinal ligament at so the back. Clever. Very long word, try saying that five times in a row. Um, so what happens is the disc tends to bulge out to one side because it can't get out of the back and then it presses on uh, one of the nerves, yeah. as Meg was saying, to cause those common symptoms of, that are commonly known as sciatica. sciatica. So that pain radiating down one leg. Mm. Now the reality of the situation is the pulposus can be reabsorbed into the body yeah. and that happens within two to six weeks. Well, that's what's really interesting. The body is programmed to heal, yeah. isn't it? And people get so terrified if they've got a herniated disc. Yeah, because it's so be incapacitating disabled. in the beginning. Yeah, it's really painful. But when people then, you know, so that can happen. So if it gets mm. reabsorbed into the body, people still can be in a lot of pain. And one of the reasons that is is because all of the soft tissue around the area, yeah. particularly the erector spinae and the quadratus lumborum area, and perhaps even the psoas, will lock in place, right, to sort of support that um, thoracic area, that lumbar oh, area. Yeah. So <clears throat> you have this kind of lockdown, and that won't go mm. away in your mm. six weeks mm. to two months. And that's where we really massage therapists come in. Yeah, and there's there's been quite a lot of interesting research around uh, herniated discs uh, because obviously this structural model we have of the body, um, if something... If something goes wrong with the structure, within a structural matter model, we think that necessarily leads to pain. Yeah. But there's been a lot of research to show that actually if you x-ray, you know, a thousand people of the normal population, yes. lo loads of us are walking around with herniated discs, mm. and in some cases quite large herniated discs, um, and we're in no pain whatsoever. Right. Um, so that links back into actually the mystery of pain, and particularly chronic pain, mm. where there's also something going on in the central nervous system about how we you know yeah. interpret interpret signals from the body um and there's also no correlation between the size of a herniated disc no, and that's the amount so of interesting so yeah. you can have a tiny herniated disc and be an excruciating pain yeah. or have a massive bulge and yeah, be yeah. no pain whatsoever i know and there's a lot of that on the online course so if it's something that's been challenging for you that course yeah. is really really good because it goes through um not only the detail of herniated disc mm. and sciatica but things like piriformis syndrome and other pathologies yeah. associated which can also be missed 
We can talk about that in another episode, maybe, can we? Piriformis syndrome, because that's syndrome. one of the things that gets confused. But I think the, the main points when you're treating herniated disc is that um, Meg and I, in our experience, and a lot of our students have found that we are able to give substantial Absolutely. pain relief um, for clients with um, both acute and chronic mm. herniated disc. So that tends to be what we get in our clinics of people who had a herniated disc two years ago. Yeah, they're, they're still or in 10 pain. years ago. Um, however, there are a couple of things to watch out for, mm. and one would definitely be bolstering, which you're very oh, big, I'm big on. Oh, I'm big on this. Bolstering so, and positioning. Yeah, for, so if somebody... For herniated disc, or people are just generally in a lot of pain. Well, low back yeah. pain. So you don't want somebody to be lying on their stomach for more than 35 minutes um, at all when they have low back pain, yeah. and a lot of therapists get too far into like the back area mm. um, for too long. So, you know, a half an hour, 25 minutes, a bolster... Um, not somewhere I can have a bolster now, <laughs> no. but sort of between the pubic bone and the umbilicus, so kind of really in the low area. When they're prone, right? When they're the prone, yeah. 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 Or get them side-lying, so kind of turn them around. Also, if they have low back pain, it's really important to also open up the front yeah. of the body, so pecs need to be sorted and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, on the online course actually we show a full protocol for treating lots of different types of low back pain including herniated disc and again that's really a synthesis of the best advanced techniques yeah. so the fascial techniques, trigger point techniques, um, stretching yeah. and self care actually teaching your clients self care exercises gentle mobilisations, gentle stretching, getting them walking again is really yeah. important um, one quick um, story before we have to wrap up is a friend of mine hurt herself probably a herniated disc and the uh, she went to see the physio and the physio sent her to the disabled hydrotherapy group uh -huh. so that was and you have to question like what that's actually setting up in somebody's, somebody's head, mind psychologically yeah. so really important educate your client it's not debilitating for life there's lots of things no. they can do about it and most cases actually resolve on their own and even quicker if they get your help yes, as, and a, so, as a trained you know, massage the therapist the conclusion of that is absolutely you can treat them the big Alarm is if they're having pain down both sides of the yeah. legs, right? Yeah. So that's when they get a trip to the ER immediately. Yeah. So anyway, lots of stuff about those two areas. Yeah. Um, but we'll wrap it up here and we'll see you on the online yeah. course. Don't be horrified of herniated disc. <laughs> so if you want to know a bit more information, check us out at the website, www.jingmassage.com. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter, follow us on <laughs> at Jing Institute. And the Facebook page is something to do with Jing, Jing. as well. It's probably Probably subscribe on iTunes via iTunes if you do forget to say do it